pedwar llew tew, heb ddim blew. Dair ochr yma, a dair ochr drew. So wrote local Victorian poet John Evans of these huge stone lions. Now somewhat forgotten, they once flanked the entrances to one of the most remarkable railway bridges in Britain. To construct a bridge with two train tracks, 1,400 feet across the fast-flowing waters of the Menai Strait, is no mean engineering feat. So when you realise the Britannia Bridge was constructed in the mid-19th century, it really does make it something rather special. Joining the mainland to the Isle of Anglesey in North Wales, when the bridge opened in 1850, it formed the last link in the Chester to Holyhead Railway. One of the main drivers of the project had been the need to get mail to and from Ireland. And with the opening of the Britannia Bridge, there was now a complete line from London Euston to Holyhead. Construction of the bridge began in 1846, with Robert Stevenson, son of George, as chief engineer. As the Menai Strait was still a navigable channel towards the Irish Sea, the Admiralty insisted any bridge crossing it should pose no obstruction to shipping and must have headroom of 105 feet above high water level. Stevenson proposed a revolutionary tubal design for the bridge. Trains would run through tubes made of wrought iron riveted plates, rather than on top, as might have been expected. These tubes needed to be of some considerable length, bearing in mind the shorter point to cross the water was already occupied by Thomas Telford's suspension bridge, built some 20 years earlier. There were two main spans of 460 feet and two smaller spans at each side of 230 feet, all supported by masonry towers. The middle tower sitting midstream on Britannia Rock and of course from where the bridge takes its name. The point of the tubular design was the efficient and even distribution of heavy loads, allowing the bridge to span a greater distance without compromising its structural integrity. The tubes were constructed on the local shoreline, floated out with pontoons and then hydraulically pumped into position on the towers. As they were raised, stonework was built up under the tubes, adding further support. On completion, it was the longest continuous wrought iron span in the world. Road traffic now passes along the bridge as well, an indirect result of a terrible fire in 1970. The iron tubes were deemed unsafe and replaced with a new rail deck supported by steel arches. A new road deck, added in 1980, sits above. The masonry towers remain, as do the lions, not as prominent perhaps, but still there, still keeping watch. The same stone sentries John Evans wrote of 170 years ago. But although changed, the glory of Stevenson's Britannia Bridge lives on. The techniques that Stevenson pioneered continue to influence the design and engineering of structures around the world. Perhaps most importantly, it is the bridge that is still needed and still very much in use today. <laughs>